out and they're helping people. And that's what it's all about. Amen. Hallelujah. Father, I love you. Lord, I thank you for this service. I thank you for what you're doing in each of our lives, Father. Lord, I thank you for the awakening, God, that you're letting take place. Allow to take place in our lives because we are getting up and stirring ourselves. Amen. Lord, you told us to stir ourselves, Father. Glory and Lord, to prepare our hearts to Glory seek you. And Lord, I'm seeking you, Father. Glory Lord, just like a woman that lost a penny in her house, Father, and she Glory wasn't satisfied. God. Lord, that she tore everything apart looking for it. Father, I want so much of you, Lord, that that's all that comes from me, Lord, is you, Jesus. That that's all that people see, Father. Lord, consume me in thy word, Father. Lord, put your heart in my heart, Father. Lord, that it'll have a love and compassion, Lord. Lord, that's beyond flesh, Father. Lord, let this mind be in me, which was also in Christ Jesus. Lord, Jesus, move through thy people, Lord. Lord, glory yourself within us, Lord, to this dark generation, Father. Lord, this generation that is full of evil and wickedness, God. Lord, cause that light to shine brightly. Lord, that that people will see and say they are Christ-like. Lord, I know they were called Christians first in Antioch because they were Christ-like. Lord, that's what's got to happen again. Lord, that your people are manifesting in thy spirit. Lord, everywhere they go, in every situation, Father. Lord, that that's all people see. Lord, it's you, Lord. And Lord, there will be a hunger and a thirst and a desire, God, once again for you, Lord. Lord, in this nation. Lord, and I pray for my nation. Lord, I pray, Father. Lord, that you give us more time. Oh, Father, Lord, you can do anything. And Lord, I know the time and season that we are in your word. But, Lord, you can prolong the season if you desire. Yes, Lord. And, Lord, I believe that if your people, Father, if they'll humble themselves, Father, and repent, God, and turn back to you, return back to the old past, Father, and, Lord Jesus, and turn away from their iniquity, and, Lord, and seek your face, Lord, to cry out to you, Father, Lord, that you'll hear from heaven and heal our land. Amen. Lord, help us, Lord, to do and be obedient to thy word and walk Amen. according to you, O oh God. Lord, then you can bless us, O oh God, and bless our nation. Help us, O oh Father. Yes. Lord, I pray that you move and touch each and every one under the sound of my voice. Lord, move in every situation they have. Lord, if they need jobs, God, I'm asking you to move in that. Lord, and give them good jobs that they can support their families. Father, I'm asking if they need housing, God, help them, Lord, to get a place, Lord. If they need food, raiment, God, Lord Jesus, provide that. You said you would, Lord. Lord, move, God, and build a hedge about their lost loved ones. Lord, and bring them in, God. Lord, build a hedge about your people, Father. Lord, sustain them, God. Lord, establish them in your word. Because, Lord, we need you, Father. Lord, I see my need for you every day. Every day, Father. Every minute, every second. Lord, I need you, Father. And Lord, I thank you, Father, for your keeping hand. Lord, in your precious holy name, Jesus, I pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I'm going to start reading. It's Matthew chapter 6. And I'll start at verse 22. But I want to read this verse, the definition for life. We know about the light. You know, in the English language, light can mean many different interpretations. And we know that when you turn a light on and there's darkness, it drives every bit of the darkness back. But the light I'm going to talk about today, tonight, is something that made things visible to understand something at last. To understand an enlightenment. And this is what I want us to see. Is what God, hallelujah, desires not only from our life, but he desires that we have discernment in us that we will be able to discern correctly. Amen. That we can see when we're among wolves. Amen. That we can see when we are go visit a church or wherever we go to, that that discernment is quick in us. Hallelujah. It's quickened by the Holy Ghost. Amen. It don't matter how much a pastor or a preacher, but how they What makes a fill with the Holy Ghost is producing fruit. Amen. 
And I ain't talking about works. Come on. I'm talking about the nine fruits of the Spirit. Amen. It's what I'm talking about. Yes, I believe in a holy standard on the outside, but that ain't what saves you. Come on. Many people, they preach it so hard or like that, that people think that that's the only thing that saves them. And if they fall from that, they are in a least little bit. They get so crippled up in their faith before you know it, they're trying to trickle on out. Amen. But God is wanting us to realize this thing has got to start in our heart first. If it don't start there, pure, hallelujah, it's to not. It is to not. But I want to start reading before I get ahead of myself. Okay. But the name of this message is, and I want you to ponder on this title, while we're going into this message. If the light in thee be darkness, how great is that darkness. You know, I've read across that scripture many, 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 many times. But it just never did leap off the page like it did when God revelated this word to me. I said, God, how can light be darkness? <laughs> he said, if the light in thee be darkness, how great is thy darkness. Now we're going to start reading. At verse 22. I'm going to skip up one. We know ahead of this. That he's talking about laying up for yourself treasures in heaven. And he's talking about selling out. Getting a sold out mind. But he said for where your treasure is. There will your heart be also. The light of the body is the eye. If therefore thine eye be single. The whole body shall be full of light. What is he talking about there? He's telling us that if we'll get our eyes single. See, he didn't say eyes. He said I. He said if you get your eyes single upon me, that means you ain't got it everywhere else, but you got it singled upon Jesus Christ and him alone. Amen. Hallelujah. He said then your body will be full of light. Your holy tabernacle that he has created. Because we are his tabernacle. Amen. He said, but if thy eye be evil, thy whole body shall be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in thee be darkness, how great is that darkness? I started talking to the Lord. I said, now Lord, how can light be darkness? If someone's got a light in them, how can it be producing darkness? I question the Lord when I read something. It just leaps up out of me like that. And I said, Lord, what are you talking about? And the more I dug in this and the more I prayed about it, the more God started speaking to me and showing me there are many that is producing a light. Amen. You know, the devil comes as an angel of light Amen. to people. Amen. So what he manifests is in him is a light of darkness. Amen. Not a light of righteousness. Amen. There are many today that say that they have the light of God in them, but they do not have the truth in them. Amen. Because why? They do not the word of God. They do not walk after his commandments. He said, if you do not my commandments, he said, you are a liar and the truth is not in you. Amen. I believe the word of God. Amen. I don't believe man. Amen. I do if it lines up with the word. But if it don't line up, I don't believe it. <laughs> and if it's something I can't see right yet, I start praying. Lord, if, you, if my eyes need to be open to it, let me see it. Because we can see nothing unless the Spirit of God, His revelation, His Spirit revelates to us and takes the blinders away that we'll be able to behold Him. And that's my prayer all the time. Lord, take the blinders from my eyes. Let me behold you in your glory, Father. You know, in Isaiah, he said the Lord was in the temple. He's high lifted up. His train flowed. Hallelujah. And that's what God is wanting to do in your temple. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. Like I said, I'm going to try to teach. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. But it goes on and it says, there are many today that are full of darkness out there. They go to church every week. They sit on the church pew. There are so many right now in hell that has lifted their eyes up in hell that sat on a church pew most of their life. They thought they could go to heaven on mom and daddy's uh, faith. Mom and daddy's Holy Ghost. But they can't. Hallelujah. you got to get this thing for yourself. Amen. Hallelujah. you got Amen. some in the church today. They live unmarried together and they come Amen. to church. Come on. And they're 
shouting bigger than anybody in there. They're speaking in tongues. Well, I tell you what, that light that's in them is full of darkness. Yes. It is not the light of Jesus Christ. Amen. That's what he's talking about here. Amen. If the I be evil, your temple is Amen. full of darkness. Amen. Does it have part light and part darkness? No. It has full darkness. Amen. Just like when his children, they behold him and they get that single eye right upon Christ. They don't look to the left or to the right. But I tell you what, they keep their eyes plainly upon him. Amen. And him alone. Amen. They don't get their eyes upon the brothers and sisters. Come on. Hallelujah. You got so many sin all. And they measure their self one with the other. Amen. Hallelujah. They said, well, I want to be like that one. I want to be like this one. I want to be like my Jesus. Yes. That's who Amen. I want to be like. Hallelujah. Oh, I admire the great men and women of God. Hallelujah. Yes, I do. And how God uses them. But I don't desire to be like them. I desire to be like my Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes. That is the one that I seek for day and night in prayer and weeping many tears. Hallelujah. Yes. To be like my Lord. Praise Hallelujah. God. To go forward with something. Praise with the truth. And with a real deliverance. But we have to be careful that we do not. I know many people get upset at me. They do. They'll call me sometimes and they'll try to pull me up in a bunch of mess. I say, look, and I got a bonus. God has put a holy bonus in me, believe me. I can tell people eyeball to eyeball <laughs> and tell them what I feel in God. Hallelujah. I said, well, I love you. And if you want to talk to me about something that is concerning you that I can counsel with you to help you, I said, I'm all ears. Amen. And I will help you to the best of my ability that God has put in me Amen. to help you. But I'm not going to get pulled up in mess. Amen. I said, I value my Lord too much. Amen. My Lord don't have part with messes. Come on. Hallelujah. So I am what? Protecting that pearl of great price. Amen. I have sold all to purchase this field. Hallelujah. I have sold out all. I tell you what, it's cost me much. And that's why I value it the way I do. Yes. Hallelujah. When you have sold out everything, laid down your life and picked up your cross, how family turn against you, how loved ones turn against you. Hallelujah. Speak evil of you, cast your name out as evil. Hallelujah. But you keep standing in the Holy Ghost. I tell you what, when you sold out like that, that's why you protect him. Amen. You have some Christians that joke and jest and all manner of foolishness. Don't carry on that mess around me. Hallelujah. Now, I ain't talking about some harmless stuff. I ain't I'm just talking about old foolishness and old joking and carrying on. My mind is sober. <laughs> I can't help it. My mind is sober. <laughs> I pray for a sober mind. Hallelujah. You know, the Bible says even the very thought of foolishness is evil. It's a sin. Amen. The very thought. That's not even doing it. But the very thought of it. <laughs> I said, Lord, my goodness, help us all, Lord, because we fall so short of him. We do. Every one of us do. Every day. Every day. But we keep pressing, don't we? We keep striving to be just like him. Amen. And if we do falter, what do we do? We get it under the blood quickly. Amen. Why? Because we have an advocate with the Father. Amen. We have an advocate with the Father. He's right there telling you, come to me. Repent of this. And I will forgive you. And I will carry you further than you've ever dreamt that you could go. Amen. Hallelujah. But let me get on. Because I have a lot of scripture. I'm going to try not to expound too much on everything. I will according to the will of God. If I have to make it several services, I will. But I truly want us to grasp this. Because we need to make sure the light that is manifesting in us is righteousness. It is God. Because only the pure in heart are going to see Him. I don't care if you have hair touching to the ground. I don't care if you have skirts down to your ankles and sleeves down to your wrist. Hallelujah. That is not what saves you. That is your personal convictions. You got some people. I heard of a pastor one time, brother, that stood at his front door and he had a, a yardstick that he measured him lines. He measures sleeve lines and hair line. Oh Hallelujah. I said, Lord, how sick is the body of Christ? How sick are they? I'm talking about spiritually. How sick are they, Father? Amen. To be caught up in flesh like that. That is the flesh doctrine. Amen. Jesus said, my doctrine is not my doctrine, but in my doctrine is of my Father. Amen. And only if we walk in Him can that doctrine be revealed to us. Amen. That's a 
reason everybody can't receive truth is because they're not willing to walk in obedience. Obedience is what brings truth to you. Hallelujah. You say, well, I don't know about that. I'm, I'm going to show you before it's over with. I have scripture for everything that I say. The Lord spoke to me. He said, don't name your ministry after your name. I said, I won't, Lord. He said, uh, I said, Lord, I'm not trying to build my name anyway. It's your name. It's your name, I'm Karen. You know, you have so-and-so ministries, so-and-so ministries. And that's what they promote. And people are more likely to receive them because they come in their own name. In that Bible? Jesus said, if I come in my own name, he said, you would have received me. He said, but because I come in my Father's name, you do not receive me. That's the reason people won't receive me. I don't come in my name. I come in the Father's name. Hallelujah. But I tell you what, the Lord, he puts a people with me that's got a true hunger for thirst and righteousness after him. Hallelujah. And I tell you what, I said, God, I know you got a real people. I know when Elijah, and you know what got me, brother? When Elijah had Jezebel's prophets, up on Mount Carmel there. And he told them to build their altar. And he told them to get their sacrifice. Told them exactly what to do. How to dig the pit around and everything. Hallelujah. And he said, I tell you what. He said, you call fire down from heaven. Then it'll consume that sacrifice. He said, then I'll believe that your God is God. He said, but if he does not. And I call upon my God in heaven. And he consumes this sacrifice here. He said, then let my God be God. And had all the children of Israel there to behold that great wonder that day. Amen. Hallelujah. And even Elijah tickled me. Hallelujah. Like those prophets, I tried everything. I mean, my goodness. And then, you know, Elijah was taunting them a little bit. Oh, as he went on vacation. As he went on a far journey. We can say vacation, but they said a far journey. Oh, is he asleep and he cannot hear you? Oh, that would just upset them so great they got to cutting their sex. Hallelujah. Trying everything they could to get their old false God to answer, but he wouldn't answer. That's the way it is today. Hallelujah. They're trying to do everything that they can do in the natural. Hallelujah. Get their God to perform. But the only way that God will perform is in him and in truth. Amen. There's two spirits in the world. It's a spirit. Amen. Every one of us is walking in one of them. Amen. And I'm determined to walk in truth. And that's when the Lord spoke to me. He said, you name the ministry Spirit of Truth. Ministries. Later on, he had me to add to the nations. And he said, don't you go in your name. I said, Lord, I won't. I said, I'll go in the Spirit of Truth. And he said, my daughter, you will speak nothing but truth. And that's the reason you don't find me over in deep things that I ain't got a clear understanding about yet. There's things that God has spoke to me in revelations, and I do preach it. And God has given me deep revelations even over in the Old Testament. But I only preach what He reveals to me. You got pastors out here, and you got preachers that try to, to seem important to people, and they want to build fame and importance among one another. And they'll get out there and they'll twist the scriptures to their own damnation, preaching things that they are not. Why? Because yeah. they try. Amen. But I said, Lord, I'm only going to speak the spirit of truth. Hallelujah. Because it's what lives in us. The Holy Ghost. He's the spirit of truth. He is the spirit of truth. Let me get on. Hallelujah. It goes on. It says, no man can serve two masters. For either he will hate the one and love the other. Or else he will hold to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and man. You know, there's so many in the church house. Talking about the true church now. I'm talking about out in the world. The Jezebel church. The harlot system. We know they're caught up in flesh. But I'm talking about true sold out churches that once used to be. That now they're compromising. And they took on another gospel. And you know Paul told him. He said if any man comes to you. Even myself. He said if I was to back up on this thing. In so many words is what he was saying. I'm not quoting him completely. But he was saying even if myself or an angel from heaven. Come Ministers be judged out of their own mouth. I got a VHS video of one that preached in Brother Haney's church years ago. Used to follow holiness. Sold out, fasted, prayed. My goodness. 
till he was skin and bones and I mean, my goodness, the Lord really used him. <laughs> and he said on that VCR tape, he said, if you ever see me back up, he said, don't you follow me. He said, you better not follow me. He said, I'm walking in the spirit of air. Well, today he's walking in the spirit of air. And it's sad. It breaks my heart. And now he says, you don't have to fast like that. You don't have to pray like that. You don't have to do all these things. And they have a harvest a festival every Halloween. Mm -hmm. And they go in there dressed up like witches and warlocks. and oh I mean, they go in there dressed up like everything. I've seen on their uh, ministry page and, 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 and one of the sisters there was dressed up like a witch, had a witch nose on and, and I mean, oh, old shaggy hair out there. And then, I mean, they, some of them dressed like the devil. And they, I said, my Lord, you know, if God turns you over to a spirit of delusion, you're turned over. My good, I just pray that he ain't reprobate yet. I just pray that somehow or another God can shake him to the roots and get him back on the right path. Hallelujah, it's time that we, that's the reason I said, get your eyes singled upon Jesus. Then none of this can pull you away. Amen. If they go off in a spirit of error, you'll discern quickly. Oh, that's not of the Lord. I don't care if they turn somersaults. You know, you have some, they only discern by the seeing of the eye. And the hearing of the ear. Oh, they preached a message, my goodness. They wore that floor out in front of the pulpit. They preached so hard. My, my, my. You know, I was at a service one night. And I was listening to a minister similar to that. But something about him just didn't ring true. Yeah, the anointing was there. Did you know that once God puts an anointed mantle on you, it never leaves you? It never leaves you. Even Elisha. I'm going to try not to jump here too and too much. But these things are making a point here. Even Elisha. You know, the Bible says that he got sick and died. Elisha, the one that received double portion. <laughs> and you thought, when I read over that, I said, Lord, my goodness, Elisha that got a double portion from Elijah. And he got sick and died. But they, when his bones was in that grave. Hallelujah. And they was that boy. And that soldier got killed out there on the battlefield. Hallelujah. They threw him down in there with Elijah. And I tell you why those bones had to come up. Why? Because of the mantle of God. Hallelujah. Yeah. was still on that man of God. Hallelujah. Yeah. And I tell you what, it stays on you too. Yeah. Amen. Even if you get yourself messed up and turned around and get pulled off in a uh, spirit of that, mm -hmm. you'll still go forth and you'll preach under anointing. Because that mantle is still there. But it does not mean that the light in you is manifest in Jesus Christ. It means somewhere or another you got your eyes upon other things instead of being singled upon Christ. Yes. Hallelujah. You got pulled off. Well, there's many being pulled off today. Many. There's a falling away that has took place. Hallelujah. And when you read that in the scripture, he wasn't talking about the harlot church. They already fell away. He was talking about out of his church. That you would see a great falling away. And then that man of perdition would be revealed. And even over. I've got a great message the Lord gave me of the mystery of iniquity. It ought to do already work. It already works, children of God. And where is the devil trying to set himself up? In the temple of God. Showing himself that he is God. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm not going to get off in that either. <laughs> Hallelujah. But this right here is just showing you that you got to make sure the light in you is manifest in Jesus Christ. Amen. And not be full of darkness. Amen. And the reason I said something about that just did not ring true. I said, Lord, there's something. All of it looks right. But I'm not hearing that clarity. Amen. I'm hearing a tingling symbol and sounding brass. Amen. <laughs> I said, but Lord, I'm not hearing that clarity of your voice. And you know, he said, we'd only hear his voice and a stranger we would not follow. That's right. Many in there, my goodness, and I know they were children of God. They were eating it up. And come to find out later, that man was out uh, committing adultery on his wife. Been doing it for years. Holding the truth in unrighteousness. Holding the truth in unrighteousness. That's the reason I couldn't get a clear sound. It's because his life was not producing righteousness. And when God spoke to me in 2005 and he told me, he said, my daughter, he said, there are many going forth proclaiming that they are me, but they are not of me. He said, they have all kind of corruption and sin in their life. They're committing adultery. Not only in the spirit, but in the natural as well. I couldn't hardly believe it, even though I was hearing it from God. Because I never heard of such. Years ago, 
go when somebody was sold out. They were sold out. And they lived a sold out life. They didn't try to live a double life. But children of God, the discernment has got to return back to the church. We've got to let that discernment come real in us. Amen. That you're able to pick up on it quickly. That it's not of God. Don't go by the seeing of the eye or the hearing of the ear. Have righteous judgment. Amen. You have many pastors and leaders. They judge by the eye and they judge by the hearing of the ear. Amen. Hallelujah. You know, I have been in revivals and called out people that didn't look that holy. But you know, God was doing something in their life. And I would call them forward and pray for them and God would give them a word of knowledge. And I could feel old spirits coming from people. Well, see, now Brenda has missed God now. Just look at her. Just look at her. And I had to stop because that old spirit was so prevalent there among several. I had to stop witnessing to her and I said, you better get your minds up on the Lord Jesus Christ. I said, God knows her heart. You don't know her heart. I said, you better get your spirit off. Hallelujah. Your people better straighten up. The fear of God is going to return back to the house of God. It's going to start in the pulpit and it's going to go to the back pew. And God bring it on. Amen. Because we need it to return back. We need it, children of God. All the mess that's going on. And God's sick of it. We got to get our eyes single. And we got to make sure that the light that is in us is full of righteousness. Amen. Therefore, I say unto you, take no thought for your life. What you shall eat or what you shall drink. Or yet for your body. What you shall put on. Is not the life more than meat in the body than right. And it goes on it tells you about how God provides for the fowls of the air. And he clothes the lily fields. And so much rain and even more glory than Solomon. How much more would he take care of you? Because if you keep your eyes single upon him. And you be full of his obedience and his light. Then he sees after you. Because he is faithful and just to his people. Now I want you to turn to Ephesians. I'll try to get through this. Hallelujah. I am accused of being long-winded, but I can't help it. I've got a lot of word that I want to share. Hallelujah. But if I have to, I'll break it down where I have another service. I'll have a number two service. Or maybe another three. We never know. It might make it a series. Just depends on how far I get in each one of these. Hallelujah. But this is something we truly need. We need to know this. We need to have an understanding of it. Hallelujah. And I want to start reading at verse 17. What chapter? Ephesians chapter 1. Everybody got it. Amen. So proud to see everybody got Bibles. Hallelujah. <laughs> I like people to follow me in the Word. Check me out. Make sure I'm preaching truth to you. Hallelujah. Try my spirit. See whether it be of God or not. Hallelujah. Don't take my word for things. Check it out. Hallelujah. I want people to get so hungry for the word. My goodness. That's all they do. They get in that Bible and search, 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 and search. My, my, my. I tell you, get full of the word. But it said that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. See, that's the light that he's wanting to be in you. A knowledge and a wisdom that will go forth. Because a wise man with his souls. So we got to use wisdom in God. But you know in Proverbs it says, with all I get, get wisdom and with all I get it, get understanding. I don't care if we get all the wisdom and knowledge of God that we could ever hold. Hallelujah, if we don't have understanding how to apply it to our life and how to give it out to others, then it's to no avail. Amen. It is not profiting us anything. I preached a message not too long. What are you profiting? And God gave me that word. I, I was studying for a message. And there wasn't even con on that. <laughs> I was preparing for the next service, which was a few days off. And the Lord just asked me out of the blue. He said, what are my people profiting? What are they profiting in me? And I said, I got to thinking, I said, my goodness, Lord, yes. What are we profiting in you? And my, I started digging in that word, and he gave me a mighty word of that. What are you profiting in him? It's time that we profit in him. You know what? 
It says in the Bible, he said, Lord, I pray for them that they prosper and be in health. That's what? They're so prosperous. Mm -hmm. That's their so, because their soul has got to be a profiting unto God. But he goes on, he says, the eyes. Now, what did he just say? The eyes of your understanding. Being enlightened. He's talking about your spiritual eyes. Being enlightened. That the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling. See, God wants you to know the hope of his calling in you. Amen. He wants to know what dwells in you. There's a minor prophet. He was telling the people of what God put in him to possess in him. See, God wants you to know. The Daniel said, them that know their God shall be strong and do exploits. Amen. How can you be strong and do exploits if you don't know God? And don't know what he placed in you? That's the reason I don't run the people. And ask God, have I missed God? <laughs> my goodness. If I'm wondering if I missed him or not, I'm down there at the source on my knees. Saying, God, if I missed you, God, if I missed you, you let me know. You have to knock me upside the head. Father, I want to know your will. Hallelujah. But you got one that'll run and say, you know, but Sister Brad, I don't know if I'm in the will of God. Would you pray that I'm in the will of God? Hallelujah. I, you know, I got over here in this, and I probably shouldn't have got over there in that. And, and you know, this and that, and this and that. I had a sweet little precious lady. And, and I said, look, honey. I said, turn your attentions completely on the Lord. I said, turn your attentions completely on Him. I said, He will show you the way. He will direct you. But I'm going to stand in the prayer of faith with you. And I'm going to, see, and that's what people, they'll say, well, I stand in prayer, but they won't stand in a prayer of faith. It's the prayer of faith that heals the sick. Amen. It ain't just in your prayer. Many people get and they just mumble a bunch of words to God. Mm -hmm. has no more meaning than, and, than that grass outside. That's the reason I say everything you do, you do from your spirit. Everything. When you pray, when you sing, when you preach, when you testify, do it from your spirit. Hallelujah. I don't care wherever I go. Ain't nobody got to pump me up. Amen. I'm already primed and ready to go. <laughs> Hallelujah. Because I left the house primed and ready in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. And that's the reason we got to have that personal relationship with Him. Amen. That you know what you possess in Him. Amen. That's them that are strong. Amen. And that will do exploits in Him. Amen. It's because they know that their God is God and He always will be. Amen. It's just like when I give the testimonies that God has wrought in my life. God has made me a woman of faith. He has. Amen. And it's because I dare to believe. And I dare to step out on that branch when he told me to. Was it shaky? Yes. Did I know whether it was going to hold or not? No, I didn't. But I had faith in Christ. Hallelujah. That he was right there underneath that limb. And he wasn't breaking off. Amen. And it never broke off. And it never will. See, that's something about God. Many say, look, the Lord has never failed me yet. I don't like that word yet. He ain't never failed me. He ain't never going to fail me. What do you mean yet? Don't say yet. <laughs> don't say yet. <laughs> oh, man. That's like Sister Pam. She said, don't talk down to Brenda and Sister Brenda. I, I can't handle it. <laughs> I just can't handle it. I don't want no doubt in my atmosphere. <laughs> Oh, man, she'll tell you, I'm quick to tell you to straighten it out real quick. Don't you, you cancel that out right now with a faith. You take that back and you put faith out there in the set because you the power of life and death is right Amen. here in, the in that tongue. Mm -hmm. You speak doubt, you're going to bring it to you. Amen. I mean it, you are. <laughs> See, that's one thing about the word. When the Lord spoke to me and told me, he said, I set everything in order at creation. That's the reason it rains on the just and unjust. That's the reason that what you sow, you reap. Uh -huh. Sinner or saint. Mm -hmm. It's because this word is ready to go into action. Whether you're putting it in faith or putting it in doubt. Amen. It goes straight out right away. Because he said, my word will not return void. And it won't. That's whether you're sinner or saint. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. And when God opened that up to me, my goodness, it turned me around. Hallelujah. And I purposed in my heart right there, I would never speak no doubt. Never speak no doubt. Hallelujah. Or allow doubt to be spoke around me. Hallelujah. Because I don't even want it in my atmosphere. 
I know some people think I fall off the deep end, but I can't help it. That's how much I love my Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And I tell you what, I, and I tell them too, I said, if you'll follow me, you know, the Bible calls you gates. Oh, you gates. He said, you wouldn't go in, you hindered them that would do what? Go in with you. That would go in with you. So <laughs> I tell them, I said, I'm going in. I have purposed in my heart. I have made up my mind. Whether daddy goes, mama goes, brothers, sisters go, or where children or grandchildren go, I'm going in. And I said, if you'll follow me, you'll go in with me. Hallelujah. Because I have determined in my heart. That's what God is wanting his people to do, is get a determination down in you. Get a purpose in you. I am going to live by the word of God where it comes heaven or hell or high water. Amen. No matter what comes against me. Amen. I'm going to stand for God. And believe me, you're going to be tried. The trial of your faith. My, my, you're going to go through some fiery trials. And don't ever say, Lord, why am I in this, Father? Because he already told you. <laughs> Think it not strange. Of the fiery trial that is to try you. Because, no, you're a child of God. If anything comes your way, he allowed it. And if he allowed it, it's for your trial of faith. Try the reins of your heart that you'll do what? Pick out the golden nuggets out of it. And it will increase you. When God opened all that to me in 2005 and he told me, now let me tell you something, you can walk in victory every day. And if you'll do what I tell you to do and be obedient to it, it will bring the same thing forth in your life. I can only help people if they listen. If they don't listen to what I say, I cannot help them. That's the way Jesus was. Jesus said, if you don't hear me, I can't help you. Yes. Well, that's the way it is. And when God tells you to do something, if you do it every day, then you'll start seeing it reinforce you. When God spoke to me and he said, you bring every thought under subjection. That was in 2005. Because I was reading scripture and he was talking along those lines. And he spoke to me right in my spirit. He said, if you bring under every thought under subjection to my spirit, he said, my daughter, he said, I'll carry you into places that you have not been. Mm -hmm. I started working on it every day. Mm -hmm. Every time a spirit of flesh come at me, I rebuked it. Sent it on its way. You know when flesh, the devil, or God's talking to you, you know. Mm -hmm. And when the devil would talk to me, I said, get on behind me in the name of Jesus. I ain't got no part with you. You ain't got no part with me. Mm -hmm. I ain't got time for you. Mm -hmm. And so, God, he brought me into a place with him. And then he told me, he said, my daughter, you've been faithful in that. He said, now I want you to work at keeping your spirit. Because he was showing me in his word, a man that cannot keep his spirit is as a city without walls. A city without walls. They have no defense. Many times you don't have a defense is because you can't keep your spirit. Did I, did I stop working on bringing every thought under subjection? No. I kept doing it. I still do it today. That's the reason I don't have fight spirits of depression or, or this spirit or that spirit. I love what I seen on Facebook the other day. That little old lamb there, that old wolf was fixing to attack it. I mean, it was going to attack with all it had. And then right underneath it says, under there it says, you've forgotten that I'm born again, blood-bought, Holy Ghost-filled, Bible-believing, <laughs> child of God. I might have missed some of it in there. And, and it shows that old wolf over there laying in a heap of bones. <laughs> and then it said, well, now how, how are you? <laughs> how are you? I said, praise God, I'm doing good. <laughs> Hallelujah. That's the faith I walk in. Hallelujah. Because I know God is just like that. I'm not boasting in myself. I'm boasting in my God. Amen. And he brought me there because I obey him. Amen. And if you work on these things every day of your life, you'll find yourself walking in victory every day. I don't care if floods come against you that's like it way over your head. You'll stand there in victory knowing that God is God. He always is God. He's God of the mountain and God of the valley. Amen. And he will move. Amen. Hallelujah. It is like when he spoke to me. We used to live on, this was years ago, lived on the north side of Jackson over on Christmasville Road. If you know where it's at. Used to go to Ryan's in Mississippi to church. Uh, we would carpool together and when we could and when we couldn't, we'd try all go by ourselves. 
And nobody was going that weekend. We didn't have any money in our pocket. And the gas hand was right up, right a little bit above E. I mean, it was almost touching E. Not quite, but it was almost on E. And the Lord spoke to me. He said, I want you to go to church today. And I said, Lord, we don't have the money to go. He said, that ain't what I said. He said, I want you to go to church today. I looked at my husband and I said, now, God wants us to be at church today. I don't know why. He just wants us to be at church. He said, Brenda, I have no money. And he said, that guest hand out there is almost touching E. I said, I don't care. God told us to go to church. We need to go to church. And I said, now go pray about it. And he already seen God move many times ahead of time when God told me something. He knew I wouldn't act unless God told it to me. Well, anyway, he went in there and he prayed. And he come back. He said, all right, get the kids ready. So I got the kids ready. And we got in the car. <laughs> said, Dave, hallelujah. And as soon as I sat down and he cranked that car, of course, the devil wanted me to see that gas hand. And I looked over there and sure enough, I mean, it was almost on me. Hallelujah. Didn't even have a quart of a tank. And the devil said, see, you ain't got no gas to go to church. What do you do? Then I had this little old still voice over here. You obey me and you watch my hand move. Hallelujah. I said, come on, let's go. So he backs out and there we go. A little over an hour later, because it was a little over 100 miles from us, we pulled in that churchyard. And my husband looked at me and he said, well, God must be going to move and bless us with money to get back home. We went in that service. It was a great service, but it wasn't nothing unusual. And I said, now, Lord, why did you want us to come? Hallelujah. So we get back out in the car. And I don't know if y'all heard this or not, but if you haven't, or if you have, it'll still strengthen your faith. Hallelujah. I know Sister Pam has heard it. But we got back out in the car. My husband turned to me. He said, Brenda, did anybody give you any money? I said, no. And I said, I take it by that question. Nobody gave you any either. <laughs> <laughs> He turned to me. He said, now what a fine mess you got us into. I said, no, I haven't. I said, the same God that brought us here be the same God to take us home. He said, Brenda, the car won't even start. He said, we come, He said we didn't even come here on fumes. I said, well, that right there ought to speak to your faith. He said, God will start this car. I said, God will start this car. Turn it over. And he shook his head there for me. He said, all right, I will. So he turned it over, and I mean, it started up like it had a full tank of gas. And it just roared. <laughs> that engine was just a little twirl in there. I said, now let's go home. So he pulls out of there, and I pray all the way home. Hallelujah. I said, Lord, you're the same God that got us there. Get us home. Hallelujah. And when we pulled in that driveway, I mean, that car went clunk. It went just as dead as a doornail. <laughs> There was some Holy Ghost gas in there going there and coming back. Amen. Hallelujah. You know why he wanted me to go? It's to increase my faith and see if I would walk in obedience. Amen. Dare to step out for God. Amen. And that light in you will shine bright. Amen. That Jesus Christ is alive and well today. Amen. And he'll do for you as he did for them in the wilderness. Amen. Hallelujah. And I'll tell you what, the next day. You know, and I have some, I can, I don't feel it here tonight. But there's sometimes when I tell that, I can feel the old spirit, ah, that gas hand didn't work. <laughs> and I, they wouldn't say it out loud, but I could feel it, feel it in the spirit. You know, I perceived it. Uh -huh. And I'd say, uh-huh, that gas hand did work. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. And they'd shake their head. I said, I'll tell you why. I said, I know for sure that it worked before that. And then the next day, a man balked on our door and gave us $100. Hallelujah. And we went and filled the tank up and it went to full. <laughs> Hallelujah. It still worked. Praise <laughs> God. I said, God is God and he always will be God. Amen. Make sure the light that is manifested in you is the light of Jesus Christ. Amen. Because it's a light in you. If it manifests darkness, then it is full of darkness. There ain't no part light. There ain't no part dark. Because God is a spirit and he is light. There ain't no darkness in him whatsoever. Amen. Hallelujah. That's the reason you ain't going to have false doctrine mixed up with truth. Anything that's not of, of truth, if it has a lie in it, it's not truth anymore. Truth is truth. Has no lie in it. Amen. Hallelujah. You know, you got people that try to make up things. Oh, well, they're just in part trees. I 
said, well, if they're in part truth, that, uh, then they're in a lie. A I said, it's a whole lie. <laughs> said, yeah. Brother, it's a whole lie. <laughs> it ain't no half lie. It ain't no part lie. And it ain't, if it's a truth, it's whole truth. <laughs> so people got to learn the word. That's the reason I want people to know the word. Because when I'm preaching to you, I want you to know that I am preaching truth to you. I ain't trying to pull no wool over nobody's eyes. But let's go on. If I can't get through everything. I'll, I'll try to make another service of it. Hallelujah. But I would love to get to all these scriptures because I want you to see the depth of this. My, my, my. See the eyes of your understanding being enlightened that you may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance is to the saints. See, God wants you to know what he has prepared for you. And what he has prepared for you, you have a sensibility to it right now through faith. I was driving to a revival up north. And I was praying and talking to the Lord. And I, there was an open vision come before me. And I saw this room. And there was a doorway. But it was locked. And, there, and I, you'll see why I knew it was locked. And, but behind the room, behind the door, I could see the room like it, you could see through the walls. And I just saw shelf after shelf lined up with everything that God's people need. Hallelujah. He said, my daughter, he said, go in and get what you need. And I said, Lord, I can't go in. I don't have the key. He said, are you sure about that? And I got to pondering a little bit on that. And I said, Lord, I said, yes, I do. I said, key, that key is faith. He said, yes, my daughter, tell my people to open that door through faith. He said, whatever I have is theirs. When the prodigal son come back, hallelujah, and when the father put the robe on him, put the ring on him, and the brother got jealous. Hallelujah. What did he tell that brother? Because the brother said, you never killed a fatted calf for me. You never had this jubilation for me. Hallelujah. He said, well, my son, you're in the kingdom. He said, all I possess has been in your hand, Rich. Then all you had to do is reach out and get it. It's been in your accessibility. So it is to us. And if it's not to your sensibilities, we called you out, let doubt creep in. Come on. And steal it from you. That's the reason I said flesh will rob you. Amen. Living in the flesh, man, will rob you of what God has. That's the reason you need to study Romans 8 backwards and forwards, line on blind, word upon word, precept on precept. And know why Paul realized why. That mortal flesh had to be killed out. It cannot be brought under the subjection of the Spirit of God, neither indeed can be. It can only be killed out. Amen. And then when we follow after the Spirit, we won't fulfill the lust of the flesh. Amen. Hallelujah. Let me go on. And what is the exceeding greatness of His power to us? Who believe according to the working of His mighty power, which He wrought in Christ when He raised Him from the dead and set Him at his own right hand in the heavenly places. Far above all principality and power and might and dominion. And every name that is named not only in this world. But also in that which is to come. And have put all things under his feet. And gave him to be the head over all things to the church. Which is his body the fullness of him that filleth all in all. That is what's living and breathing in you. It's a spirit. Jesus Christ living in you. He's alive and well today. Amen. Now turn quickly over to Peter. You know, Paul said, he said, when it pleased God, we're not going to turn to that scripture, but I just want to explain. He said, when it pleased God to separate me from my mother's womb and call me by his grace to do what? To reveal his son. To reveal his son in you. Amen. In Paul. In us. That is what God has called us by his grace. It's to reveal his son in us. My, my, my. If we could just grab the hold of that. I've heard many teach their people. Oh. And I've had many tell me myself. Oh, we can't live by the words of Jesus. We can't live like he lived. I said, answer me a question. Do you think Jesus walked around here for three and a half years 
when he was in his ministry here on earth. I said, do you think he went around and just talked for naught? I said, you're telling me, my Lord, just turn around, just went everywhere he went talking, knowing that you couldn't live by what he said. I said, that is a lying spirit talking to you. I said, because everything he spoke, you can live by. You know why? Because when you are born again of the spirit, it empowers you to overcome sin in the flesh. Amen. To overcome sin in the flesh. Then what gives you the power to live righteously and soberly in Christ Jesus in what? This present world. Amen. This present world. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hang in here with me just a little bit. Hallelujah. I'll make two messages of it if I have to. Hallelujah. One of these days, we might start out at 5 o'clock and be here to dawn. <laughs> Isn't that what Paul did? <laughs> he preached and preached and preached. Boy, they hung with him, though, didn't they? <laughs> they hung with him. And there was a man that fell asleep in the rafters. There's one of them gave out on him. <laughs> Fell from the raptor and he fell, but Paul, he stopped long enough to raise him up from the dead and just kept on and preached the dawn. My goodness. Lord, put that hunger and thirst in us like that, Father. Hallelujah. All right, First Peter 2 and 1. Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to the strangers scattered throughout Pontus, Galatia, and Asia, and that other word, elect according to the foreknowledge of God. See, we are elect to the foreknowledge of God. Why am I speaking so much about the wisdom and knowledge of God? Because that is the light that dwells in us. Jesus Christ is that light. He is the one that come from heaven. He is the light that come into the world. Amen. And what is the light? It's the life of men. Amen. Tells us plainly in John chapter 1. Amen. If I can get to it. I'm going to try. <laughs> Hallelujah. It is the light that is the light of man. Hallelujah. And the life that is manifested in you is Christ Jesus. It's Christ in us, the hope of glory. So don't let that devil lie to you and tell you you can't live like Christ. You can't live like the Lord Jesus Christ. Pray to be like him. Pray to think like him, to talk like him, to walk like him, to pray like him, to preach like him, to teach like him. My, my, my. Just to be like my Lord. That's all I asked. Hallelujah. It's in right here. Elect according. See, we are the elect of God. And it tells us, too, to pray always. So much more when we see that day approaching. Because it, it said right in there that the very light would be deceived if it were possible. But it ain't going to be possible. Why? Because we're going to be seeking. We're going to be knocking on that door. Lord, put a spirit of discernment in me. Because there are many false prophets out in the land. Many false teachers. And they're trying to do what? Steal your soul. Hallelujah. So know God for yourself. Amen. If you don't get nothing else tonight, just know God for yourself. My goodness. Get such a personal relationship with Him. Hallelujah. That you got an immediate line to Him. I don't care what trouble comes your way. Right away. Just like I was sharing when God showed me a vision, showed me that there was an angel before me and on each side and behind me and every one of them with their swords drawn. Told me his divine protection was on me. It was all around where I live, all around the church. When they were coming against us so much, and the and a, and a threat was given against us, and the Lord told me, He said, "My divine protection is up on you." Hallelujah! And He is, He is. And I don't care what situation I get in. Right away, immediately, I got that line open. It's always open. I hear from Him. My ears tuned into Him. Hallelujah! And I know what to do and what not to do in any situation. And that's the same with you. He will tell you what to do. Keep an open line steady with Him. Yes. You can be at work praying and keep your mind on what you're doing. You can be washing dishes and praying. Cleaning your house and praying. Hallelujah. You can always be at prayer. There's a spirit of prayer. But right here it says the knowledge of God the Father through sanctification of the Spirit. Unto what? <coughs> Obedience. Obedience is better than sacrifice. Amen. Obedience is what calls the blessings of God to rain out on you. It's the willing and obedient of the Lamb. The willing and obedient. You know, Paul says, I obeyed this gospel 
the, this ministry that's in my life willingly. Because he said, one way or the other, i got to fulfill it. If I don't do it willingly, God will cause me to do it under duress. I don't want to do it under duress. I want to do it willingly. Why? Because I want the windows of heaven to open up <laughs> and bless everything I touch. And that's what will happen. Everything you touch will be blessed. Everything. Am I talking about big... See, the middle of the flesh wants to go off to goals and riches and big mansions and uh, Lamborghinis and Royal Royces and that ain't what God's talking about. I'm sorry to bust your bubble. <laughs> He's talking about the riches in Him. My, my, my. Not that you ain't going to be blessed and have a house to uh, bed to lay your head in. But, you know, Jesus didn't even have that. Jesus didn't even have that. I've been without that. I was several years without no money coming in whatsoever. And didn't even have a place to lay my head. But God opened the door one after the other. Made sure I had a place to lay down. Made sure I had food to eat. And then I, I was under complete dependence on him. Period. Period. Boy, he taught me a lot during that time. Mm. He taught me a lot. But my goodness, I wouldn't take it back for nothing. Amen. Now I have a roof over my head. Is, this, is it the best roof? No, but I tell you what, it's like a mansion to me. Mm. Hallelujah. I got a bed. I, sometimes I'll get in there and lay down and start praying. I said, God, thank you for this bed. Thank you, Father. I could be under a bridge somewhere sleeping. I said, I could be, when I was driving a truck, and I went down through Los Angeles there, California, and I seen all these homeless people, little children out there too. I broke my heart. And just people wandering aimlessly. And, and you could see them have those cardboards broken down where they laid them. That was their bed. Some of them had covers, some of them didn't. Oh, my heart broke. My heart broke. That's the reason I'm ready to help people. I'm ready to help. If it's in my possession to help them, I help them. Even when it costs me. When it, even if it costs me. The Bible says if your brother asks for your coat, give him your coat also. If your brother asks you to go to the mile, go to. But see, it's sweet to the taste. <laughs> it's bitter in the stomach. When it comes time to obey it and to do it, hallelujah. I tell you what, I'm going to try to finish up this right here. And then I'm going to close for tonight. And, and we'll pick up where we left off next Saturday. Hallelujah. Brother Ron will be preaching next Sunday night. Hallelujah. Looking forward to that. My goodness. Tell everybody you can to get out of here. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. I know it will bless Sister Hilda's heart. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to try to get my son and them to come too. And and we're just going to have a good old Holy Ghost time and feast on the Word. My goodness, I'm excited. Whew. It don't take a whole lot to get me excited. <laughs> just Jesus Christ. <laughs> yeah. I get excited. My goodness. My, my, my. Because I, I tell you what, I love God's people. I do. And and I, I, Brother Ron, I'll be in that amen corner till you stop. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Because I love the Word. My, my, my. I love good teaching. I love good preaching. When that anointing is there, my goodness. Amen. Sometimes I get on. I come across a, a preacher that I always seen kind of his little sayings. And I said, my goodness, that's profound. <laughs> that's profound. And I run across him on YouTube once or twice. But I don't know. I just didn't really get in there and listen. And But one day I was looking for good preaching. And... This is the word. And I come across Brother Ravenhill. Brother Leonard Ravenhill. And the Lord just told me, he said, take time to listen. My goodness. What a praying man. What a devout, sold out man of God. Preached in all churches. Hallelujah. Listened to one of his uh, interviews they were giving him. And he had a little Baptist preacher sitting out there because he said, he said, uh, Pastor so-and-so, he said, uh, you need to get in that Baptist church, get full of the Holy Ghost and talk in tongues. He said, let them throw you out. He said, then you'll be apostle. <laughs> he said, then you'll be like the apostles. They were thrown out the synagogues. <laughs> my, my, my. And I tell you what, I was just sitting there absorbing that word. And I mean, he speaks it plain. 
He speaks it plain. Mm -hmm. and, and that's the way the Holy Ghost is in me too. I can't help it. And I don't try to change. I speak it plain but with love. And I could tell he did too. He had a sincere love for souls. And that's what it takes. we got to have that. But he said, Under obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ, grace unto you and peace be multiplied. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. To the inheritance incorruptible and undefiled that fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you, who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed. See, it's a word again, revealed. That light in you is going to be revealed. It's going to be manifested. And when your temple is full of light, when your eye is single, it's going to reveal the Son of God. Yes. Hallelujah. Many are revealing many things. And the light in them is full of darkness. Why? Because they're full of man-made traditions and doctrines of devils. Hallelujah. I'm going to close there. <laughs> Hallelujah. And we'll pick up. At another time. I've probably already been going an hour probably. Or close to it. Hallelujah. Thank you Jesus. Well I tell you I love the word of God. I got so much more to share on that.